And good evening, everyone. This is the first uh, webinar uh, CEO briefing of 2021 with me. I've got Tom Marchesello, our Chief Operating Officer, uh, and Daniel Early, who has trimmed his beard. He's our Chief Engineer. And uh, we're gonna move quickly on this because lots to cover, very exciting. And I see our participants are jump, jumping in. So let me do the, the basics right now. This thing about um, water being the new gold, you know, it's important. There's a word called demand destruction. And that is, you saw it happen uh, in 2021 and 2020 with oil, where all of a sudden demand was destroyed. This happened with a lot of goods and services in 2020. Water is in overall immune to demand destruction because guess what? You will never stop consuming more water. However, there is something called unbundling, which we know is happening in TV, it's happening in all kinds of areas, and it's happening in water. We'll be talking about that. So it is January 7th. Uh, we will go on to the usual safe harbor statement, which is that we do our very best to predict the future, but we are not profits. Okay, great news. Our partner, Ivan Ants, was interviewed by the number one uh, real estate publication, Think Realty, and uh, about his um, blend of philanthropy and real estate investing, which has been incredibly successful. And here we have a little quote about us, which is kind of cool, saying that basically they're helping us with some new concept with international expansion, as you'll be finding out more. Okay. Now, this unbundling trying I just mentioned, what does that mean for water? So let me flip over to the story. So as you saw, and you know, this is something you know, this is a consumer survey at coefficientcap.com, very bright deck. This is a huge deck, very important. TV unbundling continuing. And then also another thing, unbundling of traditional banking for millions of users, <coughs> going into Cash App, Venmo, PayPal, et cetera. And uh, you know, I spoke to you a few weeks ago about the Ant Group, Jack Ma's Ant Group. Unfortunately, that is going in a very strange place because it looks like the Chinese government is gonna take over that both Alibaba and the Ant Group. But looking beyond the politics, because I'm, if you, I don't know about you, but I'm done with the politics. Um, we're really talking about things being unbundled and this is happening in water. More and more treatment is happening at the point of use and that's very important for where we're going with this. America's newest water safety challenge is something you've never heard of. It's not a dog drinking from a toilet, but it's something called biofilm. And there's just been a Legionnaire's disease outbreak. I'm gonna play a quick video. Let me just um, stop share, set up the video. And this is a, a news, piece of news that just showed up. More than 10 years. More than a decade is how long Juanita Watson has lived in the Rosemont Court Apartments on North Decom. She'll be the first to tell you there have been no problems until now. I just found out about it. It's in the water. It is Legionella, a bacteria that lives on small water droplets or mist, according to Multnomah County Health Officer Dr. Jennifer Vines. The good news is it's not passed person to person. Uh, it's typically uh, from a, some kind of water source where there's been uh, some, some kind of breakdown in water maintenance. The water has since been shut off at the Rosemont Court Apartments, but not before four people who live there got so sick from Legionnaire's disease, they had to be hospitalized. One of them died. That matches what we know about the disease. Uh. Okay, we get to the general story here that uh, the Legionnaire's disease, which normally, in fact, my father back in 2009, passed away from Legionnaire's disease from an air conditioner in Europe. Well, now it's being caught in the water. We're going to go on to discuss biofilm and water health. And so without further ado, I'm going to let Tom take over here. I'm going to pull up his presentation. Take it away, Tom. All right. Thanks. Appreciate it. Uh, well, welcome 2021. Holy moly, 2020. I don't think that uh, much to think about there. But, you know, we've been talking internally about what can we really contribute in 2021 that really makes people think and gives us a bigger kind of concept for everybody. And so, you know, we deal with all these issues in water treatment all the time that really matter to a lot of people. And there's this 
issue that we're constantly helping correct, which is water health and safety so that people can have safe drinking water, safe sanitation water, and all these other issues. And we make a lot of comments like, oh, there's a machine that fixes this problem. But we don't explain what is the problem because inside the water system, there's something going on there. There's bacterias and there's fungus and there's all these funky things taking place. And they fall into this wonderful category called biofilms. Now, biofilms can be incredibly dangerous because what they are, they're colonies. They're the colonization of bacteria and fungus and everything, all living together in this wonderful gooey slime that basically acts like a super pathogen. And it's basically uh, like everything just clings together in this wonderful goop. And it basically helps feed itself. Now, biofilms typically have to live in a water-based environment. There is no biofilm without water fundamentally because a biofilm is really fundamentally made up of water with all those other particles and molecules together. And then what happens is it becomes this, you know, replicating wonderful environment where things layer themselves together and live in this wonderful packet. And it becomes what I consider to be germ super slime. And it'll accumulate in pipes, it'll accumulate inside of boiler systems, it'll accumulate in your stomach. And so the issue is you don't want biofilms accumulating in your bodies and in the human environments that you're going into. Now, keep in mind, biofilms are not unnatural. It's a very natural thing that's going on all over the place. This is the combination of all sorts of wonderful bacteria and funguses that are out there, plus proteins that get together. The issue is you don't want them colonizing and taking over your clean sanitary water supply environments because it's an ideal breeding ground for bacteria and pathogens that can hurt you as a person. So we're really looking at ways of, of having to identify what these things are, these living pathogens, right? And understanding that they really cling to stuff and they cling like super glue style and they're hard to get rid of. It's hard to like treat them with, you know, chemicals and it's hard to break them down and you can't just knock them out with like, you know, antibiotic kind of things. Cause gosh only knows the medical society's kind of been trying for a long time and they're getting stronger. These pathogens are getting strong. So the biofilms are becoming resistant. So if you kind of flip forward, you'll see that, you know, what's, what's happening right now is there's this awareness that, you know, we've been researching now, you know, for the water industry, we've known about this stuff for many decades, but in the health professional industry, they're kind of really sounding the alarm in the last 10 years, especially the last five years, where they're saying, hey, what's going on with these biofilms? The issue is it's the layering. What happens in a biofilm is that the top layer of the biofilm and the bottom layer of the biofilm don't react the same way to chemical treatment or antibiotic treatment, because sometimes there's an aerobic and an anaerobic layer to this goop. And so what happens is some things eat oxygen and some things don't. <laughs> and what happens is you can end up killing off half the biofilm, a layer, but not treat all the way down to the bottom. And so that's where a lot of combination treatments have to come into the dealing of a biofilm situation. So it's sometimes it's a little bit physical and more than anything else. You, know, you can think of this, about this like a colony and this kind of shows the way they multiply. And there's a lot of wonderful bacterial terms, but the bottom line thing you gotta remember is They'll grow and they'll grow and they'll grow. And then they split off and they move. They literally will walk or travel and cruise to another spot, then attach themselves and start growing all over again, which is super gross. And this is really problematic, you know, because these big slimy clumps of bacteria basically contain so much powerful, uh, you know, material inside of them that it basically will continue to produce bacteria and continue to populate itself all over the place and continue to cause chronic reoccurring infections in people. And that's really why it's so dangerous. I was reading stats that said about 17 million people a year in the US get some form of a biofilm infection a year. That's a crazy number, right? Because what happens is it takes root inside of a wound and then it just multiplies itself out. That's why sterilization was so crazy important in the medical professions. And what you'll, you'll see there is that you're we're really dealing with kind of the iceberg effect, right? We, we know there's bacteria out there, like going through COVID this last year, everybody's talking about viruses and bacteria, but the reality is the biofilm is like this hidden threat. We're not seeing before the, below the surface level here, the, the massive amounts of colonies that are sitting in these biofilms. 
And that's a, a big area that we're looking at trying to treat. So biofilms, are they growing out of control? There's a bunch of evidence that says that they're happening more frequently, more often in populated areas now, which means city environments and urban environments, because we've containerized and pushed water through tubes, you know, piping systems. And those old piping systems are corroding and they're growing all sorts of funky stuff inside of them. And that's, you know, you're dealing with, you know, old infrastructure and they're resistant. They're resistant to bacteria or antibiotics and all sorts of stuff. And they're known to be up to a thousand times stronger and, and more resistant to antibiotics than anything else. So that's a crazy resistance level. And, you know, for us in the water business, the easiest thing to talk about and show as an example is Legionella, which we talked about at the beginning. Right now, Legionella is actually on the rise worldwide. There's yeah. over 2 billion people a year right this moment that actually get Legionella. Now they tend to be in much more you know, poor countries around the world because their water's not treated, but that's a staggering amount of people that are affected by a biofilm of this level. And so, you know, we're to turn it over now to Dan to talk a little bit more about it, but the bottom line is we have to treat these things and we have to be aware of these things so that we know how to protect humans from stuff like this so that we can really address it in a smart way. So that's kind of what we're talking about. Daniel, wow. jump excellent. Thank you for the intro. I appreciate it. We're now flipping yes. over to Dan's presentation about what do we do about it? How do we, how do, how can we do something about this problem? Take it away, Dan. All right, very good. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Riggs. Thank you, Tom. Tom did a fantastic job of describing to us what the problem is. Uh, so we're having to deal with these, uh, these biofilms. And, and as Tom did indicate, biofilms are naturally occurring. They are everywhere in our environments. Uh, there are beneficial biofilms and there's some that are harmful and dangerous biofilms. So when we think about biofilm, what is it that we're dealing with? Well, when it comes to biofilms in drinking water systems, the thing that we see and as evidenced in the, uh, the video presentation that, uh, that Riggs showed uh, a few minutes prior, it, it's very common to see uh, public drinking water supply systems succumb to the effects of pollution and the formation of biofilms and you end up with Legionella's, uh, Legionella bacteria and, and, and disease and that type of thing. Very unfortunate, but it is the nature of what we're dealing with. A lot of it has to do with large decentralized water utilities, big pipe systems, water sets for a long time. They have a mechanical failure or some sort of a natural a disaster or something kicks in that creates a problem. So one of the things that there are a couple of terms we want to um, we want to think about. One of them is statistically safe versus completely safe. And statistically safe uh, means hey, this meets some this water this drinking water meets some standard of use and consumption that will protect the public health and safety. Does not mean it's completely safe. They are two completely different terms. So how do we deal with uh, enhanced water protection at the point of use? Well, there's a couple of things we can do. We can put, uh, we can install treatment technologies and do things at the point of use. And this would be where you would have like a single family uh, water service connection, or you might be a hotel or a commercial entity and you have your own water service, so, uh, service and, you're taking, uh, and you're taking water from a public utility. In those instances right there, the water coming in, you hope it's clean. But if it's not, what capabilities do we have to help protect the human health and safety of the users that are occupying the, the single family home that are, that are staying as a, a, a guest at our hotel or eating as a customer at a restaurant or what have you. Uh, a couple of technologies do exist. And these are some of the things that we do uh, that we deal with on a daily basis at uh, progressive water treatment. One of them would be uh, using ultraviolet light for disinfection. There are a number of technologies available in the marketplace today. Ultraviolet light, basically you give the biofilm and the pathogens a deadly sunburn you destroy their DNA that way. Um, and that is, it's a very effective um, form of disinfection. Pros to that, it's easy to buy, inexpensive, easy to operate. The cons, the bulbs do wear out. If you lose power and you still have a water supply, you have lost your disinfection. So there is some downside to it. The other form of treatment is chemical disinfection. Been around a long time, does a very good job. Tom indicated that some of these biofilms or can be resistant and to a certain extent, they can adapt and be partially resistant, but with enough chlorination, with enough chemical disinfection, you can sterilize your uh, pipe, your whole house piping system or your hotel piping system or what have you. 
Uh, the pros, uh, chemicals are very inexpensive, been around a long time, they're easy to use. The cons to them is that they are very harsh. Uh, harsh on the equipment, harsh on the distribution and piping systems, especially in older uh, facilities. They're messy and there are some chemical byproducts that you have to deal with. Other types of point of use technologies uh, that we have, the best one that I think that we should look at and consider is a physical treatment technology. This is where we actually go after the particulate. We don't do it chemically. We don't do it uh, by uh, light radiation. We actually do a physical removal process. We're doing a filtration process. While a biofilm or a pathogen, it is a particle. It's very small. We can only see it through a microscope. However, we, it is a particle and we can remove it. A good example of that technology would be a reverse osmosis type filtration system. And this is a term you've probably heard a little bit about. Reverse osmosis systems, they have been in the marketplace for about 30 years. They're now commoditized. They are smaller. They've been able to scale these things down where they used to be mainly for huge municipalities and huge commercial operations. Now you can scale them down for the small flow end user. You can get single family home residential reverse osmosis units. There are two forms of those. One's the under sink RO unit, treats the water at the faucet. My preference is using the whole house system. Comes in from the, the public utility, you intercept that water, you do a reverse osmosis physical treatment process, and then you've protected your home. If you move to the next slide, the next one is large flow systems. And this would be, would be like for a hotel, a resort, or something that may have access to public water. In this instance, if they want to protect from Legionella and other types of uh, forms of water pollution common in your distribution system, we just scale these systems up. They tend to be much, much more robust. I mean, we're talking very, very advanced technologies. They are, have remote monitoring and alarming. It's a very effective way. So of all the three forms of treatment, ultraviolet light, chemical disinfection, physical treatment, physical treatment is the one that we like to look at and like to use the best. It does a good job of filtration and it has ancillary it has ancillary capability and ancillary beneficial uh, impact on your water supply. So there is a, there's a good A to Z overview of biofilms and pathogens and public water supplies and how you can deal with those things at your point of use uh, uh, customer location. Back to you, Riggs. Well, thank you. And I wanted to I appreciate the, the, the overview there. And you're talking about point of use, which is, of course, especially of ours. How are we intervening right now in the biofilms area? Well, a couple of ways. Um, we are currently uh, delivering uh, point of use systems for uh, some hospitality customers, uh, hotels, and they have recognized that they have got issues, they've got concerns about the quality of the public water coming into their facility. They want to have the best experience for their guests. They want to reduce risks. So we're working with a number of different hospitality end user customers and we're delivering reverse osmosis based treatment systems for those. So that's one example. Essentially, what we're saying is that the reverse osmosis that we are specialists in is something that that is, you know, probably the very best way to go, and and that's what we do every single day. I think what you're it saying. is, it is. We the, the guys down at McKinney at Progressive Water Treatment, experts at doing reverse osmosis. Uh, this is amazing technology, and it's affordable. It's not like uh, you're not like, you're not buying the Cadillac today. You're buying the Chevrolet, and it's there. And it's very it's available for everybody. I love it. And the, the reason it works is because of the size of the micron size. Because when you're doing filters and ultra filters, the smaller the filter particle space, the bigger particle can't get through it. So it gets caught and then it's pushed away. So then those bacteria don't make their way through. A reverse osmosis, it can get salt out of salt water. So it certainly can handle small size particles. Thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate it. Well, I want to have some more reports. You know, we've this, been uh, talking about building an Origin Clear fund, and I want to give you the latest update on what's been happening here. As of 7th of January, we now have a second memorandum of understanding in hand. This one's for $2 million. So we've now uh, gotten commitments for $3 million worth of investment. And I will be uh, meeting the investor uh, in Miami, I believe, in later this month, or early in February. And finally, the $6 million one is still in the air, but is likely to follow the $12 million one. So all in all, we're trying to build a $10 million fund. Why? Well, the new, new thing is really what's called water as a service, where companies do not pay for their uh, machines, their system up front. 
but they pay the bill along the way, the same way people rent houses and, and so on. And the same way that you pay your water bill to the local city, right? Well, now that companies more and more have to do their own systems and are forced to rely on themselves because infrastructure has just fallen apart. I mean, look at what's happened. The stimulus bill had a total of $6.9 billion for both energy and water. The water alone is falling $100 billion behind every year. So the central infrastructure is falling apart, which is causing this unbundling that I've been talking to you about. And so as companies, businesses, industry, agriculture, et cetera, have to start doing their own treatment, they lack capital. And this makes it very, very slow. Tom, you, you've been living through this, this deal with the trailer park in Troy, Alabama, which is a great deal but it's, when is it going to happen? Why? Because in this case, they chose to go with commercial leasing, blah, blah, blah. The point is, if we can build a fund that has capital that allows people to just sign on the dotted line and they have, uh, maybe it's a 15-year commitment, whatever it is, but they can always exit. Because remember, modular water systems means portability. So it's important that people know that they can get out. Now, of course, there's it's not done for free. They're going to give up their security deposit, et cetera, but it's much easier to get people into something that they can exit. And that's where we come into this concept of modular water systems, our technology combined with pre-financing. And now all of a sudden you have the ability to just rip through the whole point of use water treatment industry. So this is really, really huge for us. And I'm working flat out to get this done. We are putting it together as I speak in terms of the actual uh, subsidiary that will own this, um, that will hold this capital. Basically, it's going to be kind of like GM Financial or Toyota Financial. These are the captive banks of these auto companies, but we are building a captive bank for our deals. Obviously, it'll do great things for our deal flow. It'll mean revenue for progressive water treatment. And it will also mean that our velocity will speed up because people don't have to come up with money up front. So this is very strategic for us this year. And it's probably the number one thing that will drive what I want to do, which is to uplist, hopefully this year or later this year, to a senior exchange like the NASDAQ. And that is, as you get the money into this fund, even though it's a, it's a uh, independent fund and well-secured and so forth, it is ours. So it's this, this is all asset. And what you need, number one is to get on the NASDAQ is assets. So if we can have assets, then it's 90% of the challenge. So stay tuned on this. It's going very, very well, and we will be doing much more. Okay. So I'm going to just get into a little bit of how you can participate in the good stuff at Origin Clear. Now, I want to say that there is an unaccredited offering. We don't talk about it much in this briefing, but it's wonderful because I've got, I've had people invest up to $50,000 in this uh, offering, but the minimum is $500. They don't have to prove that they are accredited. And so that is a wonderful thing. If you just go to originclear.com, the big red thing at the top, you can choose, you can say, I'm not an accredited investor. It'll take you there. And I would love you guys to invest on that. But the strategic one is what we call the get paid to wait offering. And that is only for accredited or non-US investors. By far, it will only mean that they're investing from outside the US. They don't have to, they can be US people, but they have to be investing from outside the US. And I might also add that when somebody invests from outside of the country, we don't have to prove they're accredited for the US Securities Exchange Commission, but they do have to comply with their local country laws. Now, Here's what's great. 10% cash dividend means that you, you get your investment goes in, you get your 10% cash dividend. We've now gone well over two years paying dividends on time. People love us for that. And when you're ready, you double your investment in stock priced at the later time. And this is huge because you don't have to worry about, oh, is the price down, is the price up? But by the same token, if the stock starts to run, then you probably should convert to stock and get the run. But one other thing that's great is everybody gets what's called a warrant priced at five cents. 
so let's say, let's just assume the price of the stock is currently five cents. I think it closed to four cents today, but let's just say it's five cents. So then if the, if the stock goes to 10 cents, then you can take, essentially, you can pay for this warrant, which is an option with the stock. So let's say, let's say you invest at hundred thousand dollars, you would end up with $50,000 worth of stock if the stock went to 10 cents. We can explain this in great detail. There's three more warrants, which means up to four times more leverage in your investment than the original, which if my math is correct now, you've got a six X opportunity from the 200% redemption, the one year cashless warrant and the three more warrants as people invest larger amounts and they don't have to do it all at once. So very, very good structure. And you have lots of time. The, the last warrant, for example, is a five-year warrant. So it's a very way, good way to go. So also very important, if you're an existing investor, please call Ken because we have a method for you to double your investment without investing more capital. No, it is, it's not some wacky concept. It's very, very straightforward. And I think you will like it very much. Also, Ken will be able to tell you a little bit more about what's going on with the, the company and more than I can do in these few minutes. Okay. Wow. Well, we managed to do it so fast. And Dan and Tom, I really appreciate it. Next week, I will be talking more and more, more about 2021 planning. What's going to happen with the company internally? Tom uh, sent me a, you know, his strategy for what he's doing uh, in day-to-day -day operations of the company, building a marketing department, you know, increasing revenues, et cetera. We happen to be well up on cash. And this is kind of, I'm, I'm going to give, give you a, like a scoop right now. We were up on cash substantially in 2020 over 2019. The, the challenge here is that we have to get what's called recognized revenue, which means that the milestones have to be completed. That means there's a cultural requirement that the company has to become very much in the game of doing what's called recognized revenue. That's called basically milestones. And Tom is going to be Doing, have doing that fun, fun stuff. <laughs> so next week, we will get into that in, in further detail. It should be a lot of fun. Uh, thank you, Tom. Thank you, Dan. Thank you all for participating. I see that so many of you stuck around. It's a real pleasure. And um, we're going to see you next week, next Friday. Have a great evening. And I'll see you next Thursday night. Have a nice weekend.